Oh my god. All right. So my wife had a dinner guest over tonight and um this is a person that she's trying to make friends with. She likes her, you know. You know, we're in a new city. We only been in Atlanta a couple years. You, know, you got to make some friends. Uh I have I've made I've made I've made donut hole of friends so far. Um uh not to insult anyone who knows me in Atlanta and I mean there's a friend and an acquaintance and a friendly acquaintance and but friend friend you know that's where you're over my house two days a week drinking my beer or you're telling me to come over to your house to drink some beer and then halfway there you call me and say hey by the way uh could you bring some beer that's a friend when you invite someone over for beer and you tell them hey on your way can you pick up the beer and they do that and still show up and have beer with you that's when you know you have a true friend um, talking to you, Mr. W. Uh, either way, I got some parts in the mail today at work, uh, from Shumo Kits. Some little, uh, tow hooks and little, little, you know, the little pins that go through the tow hooks. So we got those. I'm still waiting on a few more bits of Shumo Kits, but those are coming via the slow boat from, uh, the, the fatherland, as, as they say in some of the war movies. Um, they're coming from Germany from Shumo Kits directly. These came from my friends over at Edo Armor. Now they're my friends. Why? Well, because they have stuff in Maryland, and they send it in like three days. They're awesome people. Uh, Robert there at Chimo Kits and Daryl Turner are great guys. Great service, blah, blah, blah. Either way, I was teasing one of my uh, internet buddies on Facebook in Texas who's building a 2A6. I did all the fiber optics in the little taillights last night. I got them... Uh, epoxied in. No more super glue for this sucker. This epoxy stuff works great. It really does. It 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 dries almost crystal clear, and it, it's hard as a rock. And I got the headlights done, and there's no hazing, no hazing in the lenses whatsoever. Um, they're going to be really nice. I did a little bit of a, a flashlight test, and you know we did this, and uh, you can see, yeah. They work. They work. They 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 work very well. So, <clears throat> and the flashlight has multiple settings. So we did that. I started uh, oh, mounting the light boards in these little boxes and putting these little O rings in here. Where was I going? Oh yeah. So my wife was having a friend over tonight that she kind of likes, and uh, we were gonna make uh, fajitas, chicken fajitas, grilled chicken fajitas. Pretty tasty. Um, so I made dinner. I took over. I made dinner. I just did it. And a little backstory there was is, is before I got into the IT field and the hobby building, all this stuff, I was going to go to the Culinary Institute of America. And I found some of the requirements, uh, let's just say, uh, outside of my scope of acceptability, some of which was just the tuition being I could have gone to MIT for less money than to chef school in upstate New York. Uh, so that was a big killer, because we grew up with no money in the Bronx, so it would have been like a eh, quarter million dollars in student debt I would have had. On top of that, learning f two foreign languages fluently, no. But either way, so this friend comes over, and you know, I just take over making dinner. Um, I am I am, qu I'm quite the accomplished cook. I, I, I toot my own whistle a little. I'm, I'm a very good cook. Uh, at the end of the night, you know, she leaves, and, da -da -da, and I'm trying to, like, beat around the bush... And tell my wife, well, you know, I decided, you know, you were, you know, this is a person you like, and you were socializing, so I decided to just take over and make dinner. And and she has a way of getting things out of me. My wife just knows, she knows how to how to push the buttons. So I finally just say what I meant to say was, well, listen, I made dinner because I'm a better cook. And she goes, well, there's no arguing that. I get, okay. <laughs> she knows I'm the better cook, but I don't like saying, honey, I made dinner because I'm a better cook and you like this person. And she's like, well, yeah, but you're like saying this woman would never come back to our house and socialize with me if I cook dinner. And I'm like, no, I wasn't saying that. I was just saying if I make dinner, it's going to be fantastic um, versus okay. I don't know. It's still, it, it really still comes out sounding bad. If any of your wives watch your YouTube videos while you're watching my build videos, like when... They'll either get it or they won't. They'll either think I'm a monster or I'm a nice guy who just doesn't know how to explain his intentions correctly to the woman he professed his love to and married till death do they part. Um, it's, yeah, what? 
what a crazy world we live in. So either way, you know, um, I don't know if half of you guys are married, you're 13, you're 70, she passed away, you've been divorced because of your hobby addictions, I have no idea, um, you know, you just, you, you have a lot of chickens and dogs and ducks and goats and llamas, oh, llamas, if anybody has llamas as pets, please, please hit up my comments, I want pictures of your pet llamas, I just have a thing, they're just adorable, we all love llamas in this family, and, uh, if you have a pet llama, I want to see pictures of that pet llama, or do a link, throw it in the comments, I will subscribe to your llama page, and I will send it to all my family, we'll all get a kick out of it. So the way, so the most miserable part of this tank is supposedly the fiber optics. Um, we've tackled, we've tackled quite a bit of them, um, and I gotta glue these taillights into the, the lower hull. First, we do need to mask these guys off somehow. Um, I have some of this special kamoi tape. I mean, I think this is to me a masking tape, but it says kamoi tape. But, who knows? I mean, kamoi is the 3M of Japan, maybe? I have no idea. Um, uh, how am I supposed to mask these? I don't want to glue the light lenses on just yet. I just want to... I just want to... I just want to get these masked off to the point where we can... Here we go. We're just going to put a piece of masking tape over there. I just want to mask them off enough. Um, I don't care if we get paint almost anywhere else. There's this little dot here where a clear fiber optic comes out. I'm going to liquid mask that. Um, the rest of this, this main taillight assembly area, I'm not going to glue the taillight lens on there, even though I, I do have them painted. Uh, here they are. They're beautiful. We did the red with the airbrush. I did the orange by hand. So they came out great. These are apparently just basically, you know, reflectors. There's no light fiber optics or bulb behind these. So we're just going to leave them there. Um, the little edge around them is going to be painted body color. So we'll, we'll do that with a fine brush. But for this part, we're going uh, to mask these off. And without slicing myself open, we're just going to... We're going to go right around the edge... Ah, oh boy! You know what I might do? I might just glue the damn lenses on, and then I don't know. It's it's hard to tell. It's it's like, do I use masking tape and peel it off? We can do this. Um, if we can just cut around, there we go. There we go. Okay. So we're gonna. You know, if we have to touch a little bit of something or other up with paint afterwards, we'll do that. So either way, uh, how many... Oh, don't peel off, you jerk. It's okay. If we get a little bit of paint on the edge, it's fine. We just want to make sure that we uh, don't completely impale ourselves with this X-Acto knife. Uh, uh, I almost slipped my finger open there. Alright. Uh, uh, let's just cut that right there, and let's tear that there. Okay, so we're at the bottom. There we go. Whatever. Okay, this is, this is masked enough. Alright, now we, we gotta do this guy. And if I have to touch, you know, they're, they're under an overhang also. So if we're not 100%, you know, dead on balls accurate, as they say in the engineering world, so I've heard on some movies, dead on balls. Is that a technical term? Yes, sir. Dead on balls accurate. That's a term. We're just going to do our best here. We're going to mask this. I mean, we're still going to be gluing a lens onto here and all that jazz. Ow! Am I bleeding? Nope. Nope, not bleeding. We're good. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So we've got we've got that taillight opening masked off. Let's be a little more careful with that knife. Just a, just a tick. 
Um, we are supposed to... Oh, we're supposed to glue a bunch of stuff on the front. Oh, these front parts. I've got these little things that go over these corner lamps. Those are coming in from Shumo Kits and Metal. This is a track link, two track links that are going on the front. They're not going on. They're going to stay track colored because the rest of the tank's getting painted all sorts of non-track link colors. So we put those on last. But it wants us to, you know, glue the headlights on or screw the headlights on or something like that. Um, and we got a couple of little, little screws there. So we can do that first. And we've got this headlight. And there's really, oh boy, these fiber optics to like go in in the correct orientation. There we go. And there we go. And we have we have a headlight on there. And we need an M MD2 two by eight millimeter tiny little guy. Oh, my beer's underneath the parts thing. You know. Let me get these taillights done, and then we'll get... I mean, headlights. Let me get these screwed in, then we'll go to the taillights, and then we'll continue on. Uh, BRB! This has been the last three or so minutes of my life, and it will be the next three or four or five minutes of my life, even with the, the to me, extra thin. I didn't use the quick setting. I don't know why. I don't know. Either way, I'm gluing these things in. The tension from the LEDs, um, it, it puts a bit of tension on the light fixture, um, I'm just, I, I got, I just started just dabbing in the to me extra thin, and you got to really hold it in, I, and you're not going to really see that well, but holding it in, and if I let go, it starts, it starts to lean out a bit, it needs another couple minutes, so I'm doing this on this side, uh, the fronts are in, they're easy, they screw in, uh, you know, a couple little two by eight millimeter screws and they're screwed in and those LED, you know all the fibers are wherever the hell they are we'll wrangle them into place but these taillights they don't hold in with a screw hindsight being 2020 Tamiya could have easily put something with a screw hole in it to hold these taillight housings in they could have could have would have should have people story of our lives could have would have should have but either way, I'm going to sit here holding this in my thumb and playing some music and drinking a little beer, um, taking a smoke on the e sig probably. Uh, but yeah, I'm just, I'm sitting here as a human. Uh, you know what? They do make these things. I've heard about them uh, from some crazy guy in the street once. Uh, they're called like vices and clamps, sea clamps, spring vices, spring clamps. I, I heard about this crazy invention to hold things in place. Um, for long periods of time until they dry and set. Um, yeah, some woodworker friend of mine mentioned them once back in high school. Yeah, I, pro I probably should have gotten a couple of those. I, I mean, if I had a small enough one, yeah, I would have just clamped these down. Uh, yeah, pro tip, get some clamps. Let that, to me, yeah, it's still moving a little. i got to hold it in. So I'm literally going to sit here watching my life go by before my eyes. And when we come back, we will have both taillight assemblies in, and we will start finagling these fiber optic wires into these little lighting units. And they bolt into the chassis probably about here, and then the fiber optics get shoved in there into these little rubber grommets, and then we bolt down a thing on top of there, and, and then hope we don't snap any fiber optics. And, um... I'm not foreseeing snapping any fiber optics. I may breathe on them with my hot and heavy just to soften them up a little. Um, my breath. Uh, or a heat gun. Maybe. Just to make them a little more pliable. We'll see. Either way, I'm going to sit here pinching this for the foreseeable future. I'll be right back. Sort of. Okay, another pro tip. Do not cook chicken fajitas and entertain house guests before working on the fiber optics. Okay. Everybody said it was a pain in the butt, pain in the ass, whatever. Everybody said, uh, you know, ditch the fiber optics and micro LEDs and little. You know what? Oh my god. 
if I could get some one or one point five millimeter LEDs, and oh my god, I would have done it. This was the front was a was a a dottle. I, RC Tank Warfare Forums is a dottle. That means easy, I think. Um, the front wasn't wasn't so hard. The back, oh my god, the back. They set you up for failure. I mean, they basically know if you're assembling this in anything other than subtropical outdoors conditions, these fiber optics are going to be brittle. And, yes, I broke one. And I, I, I mended it as well as I could. I think light's going to come out. If it doesn't... You know, I live in Georgia. I watch a lot of live PD. And, uh... Most... A lot of police pullovers basically originate from a taillight being out. So if I'm going for scale realism, I mean, in all honesty, uh, this may end up with a taillight out. I, I think I've got it mostly mended, but if I have a taillight out, I don't think any cop in his right mind, no matter the ethnicity of the driver of this tank, if you could even see them, because they're buried in the hull of this giant tank, I don't think they're going to get pulled over for a taillight being out. I really don't. Uh, you know, the Germans are very precise. The Germans are very on point. If a train is like 30 seconds late, it's, it's a big problem. Japan, forget it. Japan, it's like if the train is six minutes early, it's a problem. And New York and New Jersey Transit would love to have that kind of problem. Oh, our train, sorry, you didn't get on it. It was, uh, you know, it was 12 seconds early, and the door is closed in your face. I'm sorry about that. This back here, this is legit difficult to get all these fiber optics. My best recommendation for everyone is, is kind of warm everything up with a heat gun, make sure you know which cable's which, and then get these back... Uh, these uh, underside panels in, get the cables behind them, get them all in, and then fish everything in. Because it's, oh my god, is it a pain in the friggin' ass? Now I've got my taillight assemblies. So we saw uh, the big sections, I masked those. This is just getting a reflector in the middle. And this one is a straight fiber optic on this for like a reverse or some kind of light. I'll just liquid mask that. I'll put a dab will do ya. This guy is masked. This guy is masked. Um, oh my god. Like, I don't want to discourage people from building this per the kit instructions, but wowzers. Like, I'm defeated, dudes. I am done. The headlights amazing. They came out great. They look good. The fiber optics in the front, you know, uh, they lay out fine. I mean, everything kind of fits in its little hole, and you snug it down, and you're, you're fine. And the back, the same thing. All the little guys, they fit in their little holes fine. It's just getting them around and through this sharp bend from the housing down, and then this way. I mean... Oh, I I put a lot of epoxy in the inside to, you know, give them a little flex room and, and hopefully radius the bends, and I still snapped one. And I, I put it back together, and I, I shone a light through it, and I got some light. So I'm fairly confident they'll be mostly there. But if one of these two red lights does not come on properly when I'm done with this thing... You know what? So be it. No one's perfect. Um, this this is a difficult thing to do. They really should have done micro LEDs uh, on a screw-in board. This with the fiber optics. I, I don't know what they were thinking. They were thinking they only had to drive three LEDs, and then they could drive six lights with those three LEDs. And it's power efficiency. Fine. Listen, guys, we can buy 5,000 milliamp battery packs, and, I mean, to be honest, who cares? Who cares if you're pulling an extra few hundred 
you know, milliamps out of that battery pack while you're running. I mean, I would prefer separate LEDs for everything, but that's not the world we're in, and that's not the world when Tamiya built this guy. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I wanted to have, like, you know, side-skirting armor and... You know, I wanted to have Step 34 completed. I like to finish a page a night. After Step 34, though, we start attaching the upper hull to the lower hull. And, you know, we're going to paint this thing. So, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to finish Step 34. And I may skip ahead. I may attach uh, whatever I can to the upper um, let me put this out of frame here a minute. Let's see here. So, if I attach the upper now, yeah, I can epoxy down those magnets. No more CA. Um, I mean, I love CA glue as much as the next guy, but but this epoxy stuff, um, minute weld, I, look, I've almost gone through the whole tube already. Look at that thing. Those plungers are down pretty far. Uh, I'm gonna buy more of this. I like this better than CA in some ways. I hate it in some ways. Takes a little bit longer to set up, but it gives you a flexible, really good bond. Where CA doesn't have good shear strength. It'll kind of... It, it, CA glue is kind of brittle when it finishes, when it hardens. And this stuff stays a little bit malleable. M malleable? Malleable. It depends what country's watching me. If the guys in uh, the UK are watching, it may be malleable. And if the guys in the US are watching, it might be malleable. And if the guys in New York are watching, they're like, yeah, both sound fine to me, man. Uh, whatever. You're a nerd. You're a nerd. I'm going to beat you up to beat the shop. Um, and if people in, like, New Zealand or Australia are listening, hey, listen, guys, I say aluminium plenty in my videos. I, I don't know how else to pronounce malleable versus malleable. But uh, that being said, we then are attaching a ton of upper hull accessories, 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 and then we're building this turret ring with the ball bearings the little greasy balls. We're going to grease our balls well. Um, okay, so until... Yeah, so we attach uh, the turret ring to the lower part of the turret, and then we bolt her down to the lower chassis. So I could pretty much build this entire lower chassis and paint it and everything and but I can't put it together because i got to get the tracks on, and we got side skirting involved, so I can't put the tracks on. So, this is going to be kind of a three-part paint process, I guess. Um, just for the fact, yeah, there's so much going on in the upper turret, in the turret, well, upper turret, in the turret, in the upper part of the turret, I guess, in the innards, in the barrel, and so, but I don't know if I can get to all those screws after the turret is assembled, so I'm probably, here's the plan, I think this is the plan, is, um, yeah, yeah, this looks like this is going to be the plan, is, Okay, we're going to paint the lower separately. We're going to take the tracks off. We're going to paint the lower. That's going to be a little bit of a surprise for some people. There may have been Easter eggs in some previous videos and maybe forum posts and photos and things. and Easter eggs. Love them. Hate them. Whatever. They're still Easter eggs. We're going to paint the lower hull all its running gear. We're going to paint the... Uh, um, we're going to, like, shadow and highlight coat the upper hull. And then we will put things on it. And... Liquid mask the windows and lights and lenses and... 
uh, some other things, and then we will go ahead and assemble the upper turret, and we will shadow and highlight coat that, and, uh, yeah. This is going to be interesting. I'm... You know, it's going to be interesting. My next build is going to be the Yag Panther, and that doesn't have a turret, so to speak, more than it has a pillbox. A yeah, pillbox. I mean, you know, a bunker on top of the, the lower chassis. And I got this huge bag of goodies in from Edo Armor RC. Um, there will be a link in the description to Edo Armor and the R owner, Robert, and his mastermind, Daryl Turner. Um, and we're going to go into further detail on Edo Armor and Robert and Daryl, well, Robert Hearn and Daryl Turner in that build series when it comes up. But I just, I can't help it. I want to show you a goodie. Look, okay, I'm not going to go unboxing again the Jag Panther, but that has a lot, a lot of casting mark. That looks nice. Uh, it's well, it's resin. So I mean, we're gonna we're gonna eh, you know strategically snip this off and uh, sand it down while wearing a mask. Always wear a mask, apparently, when sanding resin. Wish I knew that like eight, ten years ago. Um, but yeah, don't sand resin without respiration. So yeah, uh, I mean, it's coming along. Look, guys, look. Look, we're over the worst hurdle, and it's the most demoralizing hurdle. The fiber optics are in. I, you know, plenty of people have built it with the fiber optics, and I said, well, I'll just build it with the fiber optics, because how hard could it be? Not hard. Very, very, very hard. Use a heat gun. Use a heat gun and very gently finesse these things, or they will snap and ruin your friggin' life. Why am I using my middle finger to point at these? Subconscious, maybe? Yeah. But either way, they're a bit fiddly. A bit. They're the most fiddly thing I've ever done on any to me a tank I've ever built. By far the hardest thing. Just because of the angles involved and the snapping ability of this fiber optic cable. I mean, it's not... I don't think it's glass fiber. It's. I'm sure it's some form of plastic. But it is... It, oh, man. What a pain in the ass. It's just such a royal pain in the ass. This stuff is ridiculously difficult. Um... There's there's just no way around it. It's it's very hard. I'm like going back to the menu going, what mistakes did I make in life to deserve the torture I got tonight? Um, not to mention, oh, my pages are glued together. So, a thick fiber optic cable. It's so... God, the th it's just... It's really hard. I gotta admit very hard to get this all in here properly. I used every skill and technique I have, which is, well, which which could barely fill a pamphlet for a free comedy club with a two-drink minimum. Um, but yeah, I mean, eh. Alright, well, that's that. Um, either way, the 2A6 is an awesome tank. It's going to be an awesome tank. I'm very lucky to be able to build this tank. I'm very appreciative of the fact that my wife will allow me down here this often to film YouTube videos of me building this tank because it really serves no quantifiable purpose in our life of improving any of anything that uh, affects our life. Uh, I'm getting a little eh, off track, deep, I don't know. But either way, yeah. Yeah, okay guys, we, we can all agree. We can all agree. This is something this is something simple. This isn't something controversial like m you know, mustard on a hamburger once you get south of uh Connecticut 
or I mean, Pennsylvania even, you start getting mustard on the burgers if you don't specify otherwise. This is something like, you know, war, who's it good for? Absolutely nobody. Something like that. Except model builders, because we just get to build cool stuff based on all the wars that have happened. Um, but yeah, this, 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 Jesus. Ah, uh, I said the J word. I didn't say the R word, at least. Ah, not easy. Uh, so with that all being done now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it a night, but we have our fiber optics in place. If anybody wants close-ups, you see they go under all that front mount stuff, and this one, they have to come out through these side panels and then snake around the middle body mounts and then into that guy. Okay, so, uh, for my buddy asking for photos, you know what, just watch the video till the end, and there you go, you have it. It's not easy. Heat gun, or live in, like, hell, or Texas, or Arizona, or Louisiana, or wherever the hell it's really, really hot right now, and open all your garage doors and just let nature in, and hot and humid, if it's like 90 degrees in your garage... You might not need the heat gun, but um, here in Georgia, even though it's warm out, eh, my garage is, is, is uh, thankfully not too hot. But yeah, they get, they're, they're brittle. They're brittle. Be very, very careful. we got to come up with a better option. They need to do some sort of stranded, like, fiber optic network cable that's, like, hyper flexible. Because I deal with network cables and, and fiber optic networking and things like that, and, and the... The network cables are much more flexible than whatever the hell Tami is using or anybody else. And they bend a lot easier. Why can't we get some of that stuff? It's jacketed. So you can strip off what needs to go into the light. The light goes through. And then the rest of it's jacketed, so you won't have any light spillage. I don't know. I, I just don't. If these things really don't work properly, I think I really honestly might have one taillight that will be dim possibly out, but at the very best, a bit dim. And if I had network grade stranded fiber optic cable with jacket, I think we would have been a lot better off. So, uh, if I ever decided to rip this apart and tear apart whatever I epoxied and to me is cemented together, if I was able to get it apart, I would probably just a hack up a, a fiber optic network cable like a, a single mode heavy gauge doohickey and, and jam that sucker in there and it would probably work even better than the garbage or whatever this stuff is to me it gives us to work with because oh my god it's just not it's not an easy graceful material to work with now I'm sure, I don't even know if I need to tape these down or not but whatever that's that um I don't even know if I'm uploading this. I may just keep adding on to this, so it's either I'll be right back or see you in the next part. I'm not sure. We'll figure it out. Bye, guys.